Hey guys, so it's been a while since I made a video. Just been really, really busy. Been swamped for the past couple of months. Couldn't really uh, get the time to make a video. But this time I'm back in the shop and I'm working on a heister. Model is S60FT. Well, actually, this, this job belongs to one of the uh, in house techs. But I, I'm thinking it's a good opportunity to test out the new Pico scope that I just bought. So for most of you who've seen my past videos, I've always been using a scope to troubleshoot electrical issues. But I find that there are limitations to the scope that I'm using. It doesn't quite have the power that the uh, Pico scope has, especially for doing uh, automotive diagnostics. And so, there it is. Finally bought myself a Pico. And if anybody is interested in buying a Pico scope, and if you're in the GTA or down uh, Toronto area, you can look up Mike Jones Auto Engineering. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing right now is trying out pressure transducer testing so let me show you the setup so I'm hooked up to the cylinder number four here and this is going to be the pressure transducer it's a 0 to uh, 300 psi pressure transducer Pico also sells a um, set which is the WPS 500 but it's a bit out of my budget right now <laughs> so I decided to make my own I'll buy my own and this would be the interface box for it so this cable hooks up to the back right here and then a BNC cable coming out this way is connected to my scope which is the, connected to channel A on the Pico scope and then right here is my uh, secondary ignition probe right there connected hooked up ground and it's connected to channel B on the picoscope so I'm going to be using this as a sink although for doing pressure transducer testing if you only want to see the uh, pressure rise or compression inside the cylinder you don't really necessarily need this but I just want to uh, use it to see my timing ignition timing on that actual cylinder alright so let me show you the hookup right now so Pico scope connected to USB and the setup for scope is channel A like I said is my um, pressure transducer right now it's gonna read from minus 10 psi to 200 psi and channel B is a secondary ignition probe which is set to minus 5 to 20 kV so I'm gonna run this and have you take a look at the waveform that I get from this. Okay. Just gonna crank the engine. That's hard when you're working alone. Right now, it's starting to collect the data. The reason why it's like this, forgot to tell you, is because my time base is set to five seconds per division. So each division is gonna be right here, from here to this point, it's gonna be five seconds. So across the screen, it's gonna be 44.98. Okay, I'm gonna stop the engine right now. Okay. And stop the recording for the Pico. And let's try to zoom in on one of these. There you go, zoomed in. Then zoom in on one portion, which is this one. Okay.
so of course on the ignition probe because I'm using a very very large time base obviously I'm going to be losing some of that capture so you can see you don't see the firing line on the uh, ignition but it's good to see that on the pressure transducer part I mean it's it's still pretty good let me just lay this back okay let's see try to go this way it's pretty even all throughout there I see something right there so that's is the firing line which I can get my uh, ignition timing from because here is going to be TDC on that cylinder and there's another TDC okay so now we're looking at the zoom in view of just one uh, 720 degree cycle so this is going to be top dead center that's going to be the maximum amount of compression that was made inside the cylinder and it seems to be at 91.55 psi and then on the vacuum side right here it seems to be at negative 7.7 .7. so roughly about 15 inches of mercury maybe a bit more okay so what I'm going to try to do is because this is not a WPS 500 I just bought this out of um, an electronic online electronic shop and it is a 0 to 300 psi transducer but I don't know if it's going to be sensitive enough or is it going to be calibrated to be ac accurate enough so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to hook up my vacuum gauge and try to see with a manual gauge, the standard gauge, if we are even close or at least dead center or maybe just closer to reading 15 inches of mercury. So I'm going to hook up my vacuum gauge and uh, show you what happened. Okay, so I hooked up my vacuum gauge right here to the intake manifold. So you can see this is already past the throttle body. Uh, so it's going to be directly measuring the vacuum on the uh, intake manifold. So I'm going to crack the engine and focus you on the uh, vacuum gauge. sweet so I guess I guess this uh, low-cost transducer is gonna be accurate enough Wow the imagine it could be that close okay what I'm gonna try to do next is hook up the standard compression gauge and try to see what pressure we get running okay now I got my um, standard compression gauge hooked up to where my uh, pressure transducer used to be so I'll crank the engine let it idle for a bit and see what pressure we get so we'll release the pressure so I know it's going to be quite higher because of the cranking Of course it jumped when uh, I tried to kill the engine. So our reading is about 90 something and from the Pico it was 91 point, point 
55 psi which is for me is just about I guess for a low cost sensor I mean you can't ask for anything more than that I guess okay so the one thing that I wish I could do is hook up a um, pressure gauge on my exhaust side basically what I wish I could do is take up the uh, oxygen sensor and hook up a pressure gauge on it and see how much back pressure this engine is producing because um, on the Pico scope earlier I already uh, have it out kind of remember that it would it was in the range of like 3.9 almost close to 4 psi that's the one thing that I would want to verify and see if it's really close to that I mean I've done the compression test the maximum compression at running which is close to a standard gauge and have hooked up a vacuum gauge to it on the intake side and it seems to be pretty close I mean real close so I'm happy with this sensor I'm happy uh, I know it's not a WPS it would be great if I had the WPS because it has so much more functions but for now I'm happy with this and whenever I get the chance to work on uh, troubleshooting engine mechanical issues compression issues I would be probably using this more and more so and if I get a chance if I am allowed to work on this truck some more because it's not that easy to get at the oxygen sensor and it lives way down there so I don't want to do it right now because I'm running out of time but if I get to do it I'll post it I'll take a video of it and compare it again so thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed this